to talk about right now, very quickly, we're going to go through some changes that you may want to take. But here's what I want to say about this first, is that Michael Pollan, remember we talked about him at the beginning of the talk, right? Michael Pollan actually has and is part of the American Gut Project. He sent off his samples and he got uh, the analysis back of his gut. And he actually went and, and was hanging out with a lot of the researchers, wrote this big article for the New York Times. Um, some of my best friends are germs. And he um, went to them and he said, okay, <clears throat> with all of this research, you guys have been doing this since 2007, what recommendations do you make? And they said, we're not going to do that because all of this research is so new. They're very cautious as to overpromise. okay? And then they also don't want to feed into um, supplement quackery or probiotic quackery because you know what? Some of these probiotic companies have been around a long time and they are, many of them are very legit and very reputable. But you start to um, publish some of this information and you're going to have everybody jumping on the bandwagon, right? Big pharma, big food, everybody's going to be there. And there may be a problem with that, and they don't want to feed into that. And I, and I respect that from them. But then he did something really brilliant. What Poland said, he, he actually reworded the question. He said, in light of the research that you've been doing for the past seven years or however many years you've been involved with it, what changes are you going to make and isn't that brilliant? What changes are you going to make? And what changes um, have you made in your family? And I say, OK, I'll do it too. If they're going to make these changes, I'm going to make these changes. So what you can do in our, in our uh, very astute audience, you could take or leave this tonight, right? Or you may want to follow suit. And remember, it's kind of a win-win. If you do these things and it has no effect on your gut flora, I think you're still going to win. Because I really believe that these are health changes. Uh, these are healthy things that you can do for your body. OK? All right, so the very first thing is something that we've OK, so what changes would you make in light of this research? Consume more whole food, plant-based prebiotic foods. Remember that these are the foods that are normally prebiotic. They're the ones that feed the good previtella, the good healthy gut, the good non-Western gut, right? Think non-glycemic vegetables. I mean, my patients get so tired of me saying that. Every week, we have these goal sheets. How many non-glycemic vegetables did you have? They're like, oh, I got a report to Lindy about my non-glycemic vegetables. Seeds and legumes, especially asparagus, leeks, onions, tomatoes, beans, artichokes, and fennel. These are just a few of the very highly prebiotic food, high prebiotic foods there are. This is actually an artichoke pizza. Doesn't that look good? Just thought I'd show you that. Um, OK, so most whole foods that have high soluble fiber are prebiotic. OK, eliminate or cut back on processed foods. All right, I have to keep it real tonight. And there is a category of processed foods. They're called refined carbohydrates. I never met one that I didn't love. I can actually say this, and I, I, think, I think that I'm in recovery, but I'm not really sure. Maybe I'm de in denial. Um, I, I was a carb addict. Probably am still one. But I ha actually, it has really gotten under control because what they were doing to my body is raising those blood, blood sugar, causing obesity in me, causing all kinds of physiological problems. And I love, this is actually from a webinar. I love what um, Kathy Madonna Swift is saying here, okay? She's actually, this is not something she wrote, it's just something she had in a, a gut health webinar. And Kathy Madonna Swift is a really interesting person. Um, I would love to hear her speak sometime. She's a brilliant person. Uh, she actually wrote a book with a very famous gastroenterologist that I have tried to get my patients in to see. It takes six months to get in to see Dr. Gerard Mullins over at Hopkins. He's an integrative gastro enterologist and sometimes he's not even accepting new patients which is very frustrating because I, I just really believe he's one of the better docs in the area and we're so close to Hopkins right well he writes a book with a nutritionist 
Now, how many docs do you know have written a book with a nutritionist? Not very many, but he has. And this is his, this is the nutritionist that he wrote it with. She says, diet nutrition therapy should be the first route to obtaining gut health and not the alternative. In Western medicine, they prescribe. Okay, so basically what's a processed food, guys? It's anything that has been stripped of its fiber, enzymes, that is not close to its natural form. Okay, it's all the stuff that we really love to eat. It's most juices. See, we think orange juice is so healthy. Orange juice, drink Kool-Aid. Oh, I know, that is so un-American, I know. I, I'm, I'm leaving town, okay? Y'all don't, don't get mad at me, I know. Um, pasta, cereals, um, pancakes, waffles, crackers, and a lot of, and most, very controversial, gluten-free breads and crackers. You can get very, very fat eating gluten-free. But here's what I want to say. I'm gluten-free because of an autoimmune problem. I'm gluten-free. Apples are gluten-free. Avocados are gluten-free. You know, a lot of times we just trade poisons because a lot of rice and potato flour is very glycemic, raises blood sugars, okay? And I am an equal opportunity offender. Vegan offerings such as Seton and a lot of pro, um, soy protein isolates and these analogs that they have that the vegans eat. Process, processed food. Now, I'm saying that many people who are gluten-free and, uh, and vegan are very healthy eaters, and they know that, and they, they don't rely on those as their staples. But I thought that was interesting. Okay, so pick organic as much as possible. This is not a fad. This is science, okay? I love what Dr. Martin Blazer says about this. I love what he says about this, because this is one of the microbiome researchers, right? And then he says that these days I am most concerned about the damage that antibiotics, even in tiny doses, are doing to the microbiome, and particularly to our immune system and weight. Farmers have been performing a great experiment for more than 60 years by giving therapeutic doses of antibiotics to make animals gain weight. And if you haven't seen Food, Inc., you need to go see Food, Inc. I mean, you need to rent it. You don't go see it. You have to rent it. I would, I would definitely take time to do that, okay? And our kids, our children, are the ones that are suffering, I think, the most from food that's been adulterated with hormones and antibiotics and a lot of things that we don't want. Okay, some more changes. Add more fermented foods and consider probiotics after consultation with a qualified professional. Again, probiotics are, they're very complicated and you really do need some guidance. For somebody who really understands them and knows what conditions you're trying you know, you're trying to treat. They're all over the board as far as potency. You know, I, I literally, for some people, will give them a 500 billion strain. You, you can't even buy those in most places. Okay, you have to get those from specialized places, okay? Um, but fermented foods. This is something that is new even for me. Now, I ate sauerkraut, all right, once in a while. But now, what I'm doing, and actually I have some uh, fermented foods that I got from David's Natural Market back on my table, and you can take a look at them. I have them there. I'm actually doing about a tablespoon of them a day, just because I'm understanding that they have this diverse amount of bacteria in them. And I'm really excited. I really want to, um, to bring your attention to a lady by the name of Kim Witcher. Kim, raise your hand. Okay, this is where as a nutritionist, I drop off and Kim steps in because she's a health coach and this is a lady who does cooking classes, she does fermenting classes, she has so many cool things coming up in February and I just hope that many of you are involved in this. She actually even has a 12-week gut restoring class and she has a, she has a one-day fermenting class. You can ferment your own foods or you can just buy them from Jill. I probably would just buy them from Jill. but. You can actually do it yourself, all you um, Martha Stewart types, right? Um, Kim does classes, and I'm telling you, what Kim is telling me about fermented foods is amazing. They have, um, of course, they have probi probiotics and, and enzymes. They produce substances like lactic acid that prevents pathogenic organisms. They, they actually alter the lining of the intestines, helps probiotics take up permanent res residence. So here's the cool thing about fermented foods. 
is that they help probiotics take up residence instead of just being on vacation. They actually take up residence in your gut. And I'm going to tell you guys, it, you really have to realize that um, it takes a long time for your gut to recover. Here's another thing. This is, what this, this is what the researchers are saying. We all might want to just do that if we, if we feel like it. Uh, but become slow to take or give children antibiotics. I understand that if it's medically necessary, we need to take antibiotics. We never want to go back to a time without antibiotics. I mean, who in the world wants to go back 100 years ago when you could, buy, you could die of a preventable infection? Nobody wants that. We love antibiotics. But again, it's like what I said at the beginning of the talk. It's the over, I'm sorry, I did that. It's the overuse of antibiotics that is the problem. It's excessive antibiotic use in children. And these are the results. Increase in obesity, decrease in immunity, increase in autoimmune diseases, and increase in autism is what we're seeing in the overuse of antibiotics, okay? The CDC in November of 2014, y'all remember November 2014? It was like two months ago. Two months ago, the CDC put out the strongest warning they have, and they don't, they don't do a lot of strong warnings, guys. They put out the strongest warning that they have ever put out in the history of the CDC, and that is that we must limit the use of antibiotics. Because what's happening? We are getting these bacteria that are becoming antibiotic resistant. They're actually morphing into superbugs. Have y'all heard about this? Like MRSA. MRSA is a deadly, can be a deadly bu a bug for immunocompromised people. So we need to be more judicious and cautious about taking antibiotics. And most good doctors, most good doctors now, do not give antibiotics out willy-nilly like they used to. I remember when my older kids were young, they just, you know, if the kid had a sniffle, they gave you an antibiotic. But they don't do that as much anymore, which is great, right? All right. Oh, and just, just FYI, the average child by the age of 17 has taken 17 courses of antibiotics by the time they're 17 years old. Um, okay, this is, next one is going to just sound so un-American, okay? You just brace yourself. Some of you guys are going to love the next one because you're going to be like, yay, my dirty house. I, I, I knew there was a reason that I didn't clean my house. <laughs> and some of you are going to, you neat, neat freaks, you clean freaks are going to be like, oh, I can't believe she said it. She's saying this. Okay, brace. Everybody breathe. Breathe. Okay, here's the next one. Relax the sanitary regime in your home, or their homes, not yours. You don't have to do any of this. You don't have to do any of this. This is what the researchers are going to do. I'm going to do it too, but I was already doing it. Um, allow kids to play in the dirt and in the mud. Quit the, all the antibacterial soaps and sprays. and it's, it's just really, all it's doing is padding uh, the, the you know the commercial businesses it's not it's actually just giving money away to people who want to get your money stop all the antimicrobial cleaners and hand sanitizers oh my goodness now if you work in a hospital I totally get that you have to use them I get it but we have to understand that this war on germs again we're killing our own soldiers we are killing our own soldiers when we're, we're constantly taking the good microbes away. And let me tell you something. I have completely gotten rid of all hand sanitizers. I use a, a, natural, um, a natural one that's made with herbs and stuff that is, is totally safe. These are not safe products. Your skin is your biggest, well, second biggest. We know the microbiome is our biggest organ, right? But your skin is the second biggest organ, organ in your body. And what's happening? with the chemicals, beautiful people, is that they're getting into your body. Many of them are endocrine disruptors. Many of them are mitochondrial. They, they affect your cells and your, and your nervous system. I'm telling you, they are not good for you. Triclosan. Anybody ever heard of triclosan? Go look at all your antibacterial 
stuff that you're using. If you have triclosan, you need to be aware of what a potent chemical that is, okay? Soap and water, the FDA said in 2005, soap and water, soap and water, okay? Let your kids play. Don't, don't be, I, you know, they even, the researchers were even talking about um, uh, petting animals, you know, like we're at a petting zoo and we have to use the antimicrobial stuff. Stop doing that. Okay, stop it. I know your mother-in-laws will be so upset, but stop it, all right? I am not doing that anymore, all right? I'm not doing the antibacterial thing. Let your kids get dirty. They're, they're washable, right? I know that is, isn't that awful to say? Okay, so here's another one. Encourage breastfeeding infants and become more conservative with C-sections. That's what they said. Okay, here's another one, reduce stress. Easier said than done, right? I understand. I totally understand stress, but a lot of times we bring, bring stress on ourselves. Maybe we're too busy, or here's another one, we're not busy enough. We're not busy enough helping other people. Maybe we have, we're just so focused on ourselves, we don't see anybody else, and we're, we really live very selfish lives. Or we're just, we're just going at break, breakneck speed, or you know, we don't have significant relationships, or we're at conflict with a lot of people, or whatever it is. We need to reduce stress, breathe, get, more, get less stress. Um, there are many stress relievers. It could be, you know, Anne-Marie's aromatherapy, or it could be just taking a walk. Exercise is a great stress buster. I happen to think I know the best stress buster out there, but it would be inappropriate for me to <laughs> say it in this audience, but I do, <laughs> I feel like I do. And if you'd like more, to know more about that, you can, uh, you can ask me about that, okay. Okay, tonight, not right now, Ed. Um, night, we, <laughs> we only gave a sampler of the importance of gut health. And from this preliminary research, I hope you are starting to see the promise. Are y'all getting it? You seeing this? Isn't that kind of cool? Um, maybe it's just me. I just, I just think all of this is fascinating. If the research is correct and we follow through on these recommendations, and it's all about doing, now it's about doing, it's not just about knowing. We have to do. This will be a game changer for many of us. Now, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna go through this very quickly because I want to honor your time tonight, but th there is a two-fold reason that we're doing this. It's to learn about gut health and all of the important things about weight control, mood, immunity, all the things that we've learned tonight. And believe me, this is just a tiny, tiny bit of the research. But it is also about taking the next steps. If you, go, if you go home tonight and you don't do anything with this information, it's really just a nice night out. You know, and you get to see a couple people and maybe win a door prize. That's it, that's, that's it, that's all you have. But if you take the next step, it's going to make the next step easier and the next step easier and the next step easier. And there's so many good ways of doing that. And I really think one of the best ways is to get involved with perhaps one of Kim's cooking classes or one of her gut health classes or Barbara Wagner has some wonderful, Barbara has this whole kitchen set up in Have It A Grace where she does amazing, um, I would love to do this, amazing uh, cooking classes, plant-based cooking classes. Or you could do um, something with Katie, you know, she can have her come to your home and do a consultation. There's registered dietitians, there's licensed nutritionists in the area. There is also something, um, it's, a, it's a health and wellness study for you people of faith called the Daniel Plan. Anybody ever heard of the Daniel Plan? Woohoo! Mark Hyman was one of the authors of the Daniel Plan. Grab a group of people together and do the Daniel Plan. It's only six weeks and it talks about community and that's where we found out about Pastor Steve Willis and that's the significance of his story. I want to thank uh, Boston Dental and David's Natural Market again for sponsoring our event and supplying those wonderful goodie bags. But also, and, and also get to David's Natural Market. If you haven't been to David's Natural, you need to get there. Um, you could do, there's so many other things. And what we gave you was a next step list. That's your resource list. And I want you to look that over and do one thing. And it could be just renting the movie Fed Up. If you haven't seen the movie Fed Up, you definitely need to do that. I know Wendy is gonna be showing that. So that's, it. that's gonna be great. Now, I'm letting you go, but thank you. You've been a great audience. You really have.
I mean, this, I, we talked intestines tonight, right? And, um, and, and you, and was that okay? Talk intestines tonight? And it was, it was very, I think, I think it is, is very um, interesting research. Mm -hmm.